So welcome back to the Athabasca Pottery Club. Today we're going to be doing a rhubarb leaf. Quite often you get these leaves with these just beautiful veins on them. And they look just as good in pottery. So we're going to do a bowl this time. Put the bowl to the side. Got my clear with my stamp. Put on the piece of plastic and use that to create the linen afterwards. And then we're going to put your leaf on. If you've got bigger veins, make sure you trim these down. Because these will create big grooves that are very prone to cracking. These ones should be trimmed down a bit more, but it's going to crush them a little bit here. Okay, so before I tear the poor leaf up too much, I'm going to go ahead and... It's just not fitting right here at the end, so I'm just going to... Go. Make sure these don't overlap too, too much. Okay, I think it's nice. So you don't need plastic underneath it, since a leaf it usually has its own um, powders on it. So I'm just going to slowly roll it in. Peel her up. Check and see how deep your veins are. Did quite nicely, but it didn't quite do in here. There we go. So just go back and press a little bit in there. And if it really doesn't want to give you too many details in certain areas, go to an edge of the leaf where there is detail and carefully just use your finger to rub it in, and nobody will know any differently. Just make sure it all goes in the same way branch out otherwise they will notice. Usually your edges have some of your very nice ones to put on. Actually, it's a very nice pattern. Good one for this. I'm just going to go around the vein in the middle here. Kind of line it up so it looks as if it's not the best, but it will make do for what we're after. This leaf's pretty much well toasted, so I'm just going to take a smaller one, pick the some nice vines, just go a little bit deeper in some slots. Try and line up your vein with the existing ones, just so it looks a little more natural when it comes out. good enough for this. It's just if your veins go too deep, it will definitely crack as it dries. And this you're going to want to dry very, very slowly. So for it to dry a month, two months, three months is not unusual. For your big pieces, your deeper veins, I didn't let them dry longer. So the reason we put this on the plastic is so that we can just kind of cradle it in. A piece this thick is not going to be fun to get into a bowl, but we're going to try it. Kind of cup it up and push it in. Basically, pick up and push down, kind of go straight in. At the same time, you hold this one here on this side so it can't just slide in and out of the bowl. And watch your overhang so it wants to bend back, it will try and crack. If you push in, you'll push down your pattern, and you could lose it. Tapping also helps sometimes. It's definitely objecting. So we are going to trim some of this excess off. Make sure you don't take off too, too much. It's always easier to take off more later 
going to trim too, too much and not have enough. That also puts a little less weight on the clay itself. There we go. Tapping it kind of gets the bottom flatter. Uh, some of these little pieces I just always pick out afterwards. This looks real good. So straight up and down. As you can see, it did move on me. Because my edges are so uneven, I'm actually going to take this across it. Double check my thickness. I'm trying to do is actually just go straight down and do a whole seam so it comes up just a little bit. But I do want this little bit of a lip. Because of that one spot that moved when I was cutting it last time, I can just take this. It is so soft I can still just kind of wedge it in here. A teeny bit more, spread it out wide like a giant band-aid. Get that guy off so I can't roll him in by accident. Of course, this edge now is much thinner than the rest of the clay will be, so it's going to be quite delicate as it dries. So now that I wield that, I'm just going to re-trim everything. So I can either leave it like this, just leave it a plainer edge, or I could even just go around, flop this on, and just rub the whole thing again. Which I'm kind of torn. Should I? Shouldn't I? Guys are extra. I don't know where they came from. Oh, that was a bubble. So yeah, so I'm just going to repress this that pattern in. And sometimes you're doing things like that. Bubbles will come out just the way they were working. Because that one was a bubble, I'm betting this one is also a bubble. In which case, it wasn't just a piece of clay. So I'll just flatten him back down again. Take a little piece of leaf just to get the texturing back on. This guy's loose, but instead of fighting and picking things out, I'm just gonna. Oh, I can wait. Usually, can wait till he dries and pull that out. Of course, I did that there a bit. I think I'm actually gonna leave him nice and smooth. It's just to make a contrast. I very could have easily just put this around the edges and gone all directions. But I think that looks quite good. And because he's a rhubarb leaf with those veins, you want to dry very slowly once again. So I'm going to wrap him up very, very well. Let's get this clay out of here. I'm going to leave him for a couple of weeks. <laughs> 